Dylan Radins got his first start on Thursday night against the 49ers, and it was sort of a weird situation because he's a second round pick. He has a disastrous performance in week two of the preseason, and despite the Titans having a ton of injuries all over the offensive line, they were super reluctant to give him any sort of meaningful snaps. I mean, they brought in Bobby Hart to start over him against the Rams, and if Bobby Hart is ahead of you on the depth chart, that's a terrible sign. So when it was announced that Raidens would start at left tackle and would be trying to protect Ryan Tannehill from Nick Bosa, the fan base's expectations for him were as low as they could be because 15 weeks of the Titans refusing to play him pretty understandably led everyone to believe this dude must suck, this is going to be a disaster. And all things considered, I thought he held up pretty well. The Niners were clearly aware that left tackle was a potential vulnerability, so they played Nick Bosa over Raidens and sent a ton of stunts and blitzes to the left side. On the first offensive play of the game, Tennessee's running play action slip screen, and the Titans' screen game has been awful since Derrick Henry got injured. Weeks 1 through 8, they ranked 6th in the NFL on screen pass success rate, and they ranked 28th weeks 9 through 16. But this specific play isn't actually anyone's fault. On a slip screen, the O-line wants to let the pass rush get upfield while the running back sets up behind them, so they essentially take themselves out of the play. But you can't get beat so fast that you let the quarterback get hit or you let the defense disrupt the running back's route. Aziz Al Shair is blitzing and Aaron Brewer tries to get off the double team to pick him up, but he's getting held. So Shair is able to bump Hilliard's route to where he can't get behind the pass rush and Tannehill obviously has to get rid of the ball. So from the broadcast, this play looked like a missed block by Raidens, but this should have been a defensive penalty. In obvious passing situations, the 49ers directed their stunts towards Dylan Raidens with the expectation that he would struggle to stop them, but he had no problem with these at all. On third and long passes, the 49ers ran six stunts to the left and the Titans converted for a first down on all six of those plays. And the left side of the line held up really well. On five of the six plays, Raidens and Brewer exchanged the pass rush perfectly. And on the sixth play, I'd probably give Raidens a B minus. Let's take a look at the Titans' third offensive play. It's third and 11, and the Niners are running an ET stunt. And first priority for an offensive line blocking a stunt is to close off the interior. If you're gonna let the defense get pressure, it's a lot easier for quarterbacks to deal with it off the edge. So Raidens is gonna flatten Nick Bosa's angle and make him cross the guard's face, which takes away the B-gap rush. And he does this while staying at the same level vertically as Aaron Brewer to minimize the space that the pass rush has to get through. And then Raidens does a good job on the second half of the stunt to flush the looper behind the pocket. And this was a big third and 11 conversion that was made possible by good pass protection on the left side. Right here, San Francisco's running a TE stunt and blitzing a nickel corner. Raidens again does a good job maintaining equal vertical positioning with Aaron Brewer. He inherits the block from the penetrator with perfect timing so there isn't an open alley through the B gap, but he keeps his eyes on K1 Williams and he's able to pick up the blitz as well. I've also got to give props to Ryan Tannehill for the pocket presence here. He senses the interior pressure and he's able to sidestep into some open space where he can reset his feet and step into the throw. Right here we've got third and eight. Again, the Niners are running ET and Raidens has good recognition of the stunt, but I don't like committing this outside hand towards passing off the penetrator because you're gonna need that hand available when you're trying to flush the looping rusher, but his athleticism bails him out here and he's still able to hold him off. This is the only time the 49ers were really able to get any pressure off of their stunts, and this is great technique by Samson Ebicom to kind of force Raidens and Brewer into a clumsy exchange. As he's penetrating inside, Ebucom's going to do a rip move under Raiden's inside arm, which is a good way of preventing him from disengaging without technically holding. And then because Ebucom and Raiden's are still connected when Brewer picks him up, he ends up pushing Raiden's as well, which screws with his balance even more. But despite all of that, Raiden's is still able to land an outside hand punch and slow down the defensive tackle. And again, even though this isn't a Ryan Tannehill video, I've still got to point out how crazy good this throw is deep out to the field side with no room to really step into the pass. So from a mental perspective, Dylan Raidens was on top of things. It didn't seem like the game was too fast for him at all. And that's really encouraging. When it comes to more standard pass sets though, it's more of a mixed bag. To start out, he looked really comfortable getting into his pass sets, which he struggled with the last time we saw him play. If you go back to my breakdown of the Tampa Bay preseason game, at about the 15 minute mark, I go in depth on his footwork. 
but he looked like he had never played tackle before in his life. It was so weird because his pass sets in college were extremely fluid. It was one of his biggest strengths as a prospect. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that he played left tackle in college, but he was playing right tackle versus the Bucks. And switching from left to right and vice versa, it's not like Madden where you just change positions and you're the exact same player. It can be a huge adjustment for a lot of people. So yeah, from everything I've seen, he's a lot more comfortable at left tackle than right tackle, but I haven't seen him play right tackle in four months, so who knows. So he was really solid getting into his pass sets against San Francisco, but when it comes to hand usage, anchor, and footwork later in the snap, he definitely struggled at times. The first issue I noticed a lot was that he was not landing very effective punches. Raidens uses a two-hand punch almost exclusively, which is a bit unconventional, but he was delivering his punches so passively that it almost never phased the pass rusher at all. Calling this a punch isn't even really accurate, he's basically just bracing for contact and holding on for the ride. I understand why he wasn't being super aggressive with his hands because he was facing Nick Bosa and if you overextend or overcommit, he'll exploit you with counters all day. But the combination of weak punches and bad anchor resulted in Raidens putting up pretty much no resistance to bull rushes. His hand usage on this play was especially bad because his arms were so wide that he gave Bosa a completely open chest for him to latch onto. Right here, Raidens again doesn't initiate the contact. Jordan Willis bull rushes him, gets that initial push, and as Raidens is trying to recover his base, he isn't able to reestablish squared footing. You see how each time he replatforms, his feet are staggered, and so when his inside foot drops back, he loses the outside anchor and gives up the sack. And it's not that tackles always need to strike first. You can let the pass rusher strike first and then punch based on what he does, or if you're just like a brick wall, you can anchor down and absorb the contact, but Raidens is light for a tackle, so his anchor isn't naturally that good. In college, he almost never struggled with bull rushes, but some of the guys he was blocking at the FCS level legitimately looked like Jonah Hill. In the NFL, you can't afford to be undersized and passive. Now, if you're going to be aggressive with your hands, you still need to be technically sound with your posture. The rule that I've always heard is show the pass rusher your numbers and act like you're sitting down in a chair almost. So I don't like him leaning into his punch like this, but you can see how it's a lot easier to anchor down when you initiate the contact. This is a great pass blocking rep. Again, smooth start to the pass set. He's proactive with his hands. And then the biggest thing which he didn't do on the previous play is he's punching up, not out. This is huge for two reasons. First of all, driving your hands up through the shoulder pads, you're standing the pass rusher up and preventing him from getting low and winning the leverage battle. But then you're also redirecting that force back into establishing strong hips and it helps you create a good anchor. And then watch how he resets his base. He's getting pushed back a little bit. This outside foot comes back, but earlier in the game, he followed this up by dropping back the inside foot, which opened the gate for him to get beat inside. So Raidens does a quick jump to number one, get his feet square, and number two, set a base that's angled against the bull rush. So altogether, this was a really good rep, probably his best pass protection rep of the entire game. Right here, Raidens is going to be blocking a speed rush. He's going to split the pass rusher in half. And speed rush, the main thing is you're trying to defeat the outside hand. So really good job by Raidens to not let Willis chop this arm down. And then good job resetting as far as keeping square, but he does get a little heel clicky here. If you just imagine like trying to knock over a floor lamp versus trying to knock over a chair that weigh the exact same amount, you're gonna have to push harder on the chair because it's got a wider base. So that's why you never wanna bring your feet together as an offensive tackle. You're just making it a lot harder on yourself. And then last play we're gonna discuss here, again, I don't like the heel click, but really good flexibility in his recovery, using the inside hand to flush out the speed rush, and then great job by Tannehill to stand in there and deliver the ball accurately. So yeah, that's gonna do it. Overall, Raidens didn't look like an all pro or anything, but he looked like an NFL player, which considering how low the expectations for him had fallen, I would count that as a win. As far as whether he should start over David Questenberry, again, I can't speak on Raidens as a right tackle because he looked like a completely different player on the right side, and I have no idea what to expect from that. My hunch is that the difference between Raidens and Questenberry is negligible, and I always lean towards wanting young players to get experience, so I guess I would rather see Raidens start, but I don't think playing Questenberry over Raidens is like sabotaging the offense or anything. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to subscribe. Also follow me on Twitter and check out my Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting access to extra Titans content.